In this video, we're going to talk more about the new Deneb Visual in Power BI. Like many of you, I continue to geek out about this awesome new tool, and so I want to just share some more of the things I've figured out so far and all the cool things you, you can do with it. Um, and uh, you'll find out quickly that you can make a chart multiple ways sometimes, and so today I'm going to talk about uh, three ways you can make the same chart um, in which you have um, two or more measures in the in the visual. Um, and uh, so I'll, I'll go through those examples. Um, you know, the, the typical way is to use just the standard layer approach, which is a perfectly fine way to do it, um, but it can get lengthy as you have more and more things that you need to layer on top of each other. Um, so I'll show you the standard way. I'll show you this way you can use a variation on the repeat transform uh, with layer to, to do it uh, even easier and in a more expandable way. Um, and then the last one I'll show you is my favorite so far is to use the fold transform, which basically allows you to unpivot your data inside the visual to make um, creating the visual uh, even, even easier. Um, and they also, if you're curious, have a, a pivot uh, function as well. So in Power Query, you know, an unpivot step is one of the best things you can do usually when properly modeling your data. And now this tool allows us to even do that type of a transformation or to undo it just within the context of the visual. So I'm excited to see what, what people do with this. Um, again, if you're enjoying these videos, please subscribe uh, to the channel. All right. So the first thing I'll show is just sort of a traditional chart. Um, I've just got a, a list of year product and sales here, and I have a slicer just to create it so there's only two bars in the visual. Um, and this is a pretty typical way that you would you would see data. Um, and uh, notice there's only one measure in here, the sales measure. And so this visual is, is very straightforward uh, to do in uh, the Deneb visual. And if, you, if I open up the, the code here, and you can see, you know, not a lot of code here. This is uh, one of the, the templates you can start with uh, when you create a new visual. And basically, you've just got your X and Y encoding with a single measure. And then you color off of the, the product column. And you also um, set your X off, offset so that these are side by side instead of stacked on top of each other uh, with the same uh, column. So again, real quick and easy way to make this. Of course, you could make this visual with the native visuals, um, but I'm showing you this because I'm assuming you're using Deneb because you want to add text labels or do something on top of this. So I'm just showing you um, uh, a different approach you can take with your visuals before you make them look much nicer than what I'm showing here. All right. So now, though, if you add a second measure, and so in this case, I just wrote um, two measures, one that uh, filters to the year 2021 and one that uh, do, goes to 2020, just to have two measures in the visual. All right. And so in, in this type of an approach, since they're in separate fields, instead of stacked on top of each other with a, a like an attribute column, um, you have to use like a layer approach. And so in this case, it's, it's a little more involved. It's still straightforward, very doable, um, but you would layer two bar marks on top of each other. Um, you know, assign them the proper encoding based on which field you wanted each one to go. Um, you can specify an offset value for each. Um, you can assign them different colors. Um, and then depending on if you offset them a little bit or a lot, you may need to set the opacity less than one so that you could see one through the other. Um, and again, this approach is fine. We can open it up here. Um, but uh, one of the things you'll notice is that, that there isn't a legend uh, that's created here. Uh, that's, so that's not something you get automatically with the, this type of visualization approach. Um, and if I want to add multiple measures, um, it would it would get even longer. So in this case, again, it's not a, not a ton of code. Um, you know, the, you, you know, putting the encoding out here where they have in common the x-axis, and then uh, they each get their own encoding. So I've got one mark um, with you know I set the color, um, the size made that one uh, positive 10, made the other one negative 10. Um, this one is for the 2021 measure. This one's for 2022. Um, you know, also um, changed the, uh, turns out you only have to do this on either of these. It's worked on either, but I also set the access title to be total sales here. Um, and, it, and it worked. I didn't need to do it in both places, for example. 
Um, and again, this is a perfectly fine way to build this, but you can see if I was to add a third or fourth uh, measure here, you know, this starts to get longer and then working out the, how much should I offset is going to get more iterative. Um, but, but you can get there, but it turns out there's, there's much easier ways to, to get to um, a more scalable result with multiple measures. All right. So in this case, um, I've got this visual here. I'm just going to go ahead and add, I forgot to add this third measure as well. All right. So now I've got, you know, 20, 21, uh, 20 and 19, uh, measures in there as well. And you may have seen, um, previously or be aware of that you can use the, the repeat transform um, to make side-by-side -side visuals like this. And so this is an awesome feature in its own right. But in this case, you're saying, hey, I want to do a repeat transform and I'm going to give you an array of the measures that I want to put in the repeat. And then I'm going to give you the, the spec or the visual I want. And then you can basically pass in, you know, it's basically for each of these measures, I want you to create this visual and put them, put them uh, side by side, or you can specify vertically as well. Um, but in this case, you know, when it comes down to what should the Y axis be, you know, then you put this um, expression there to say, Hey, I want to use a repeat, you know, and it's, and it's called repeat. Um, and again, that works great. And then when it comes down to the color, um, you would you, you would do the same thing down here. However, in this case, instead of the field value, I'm going to use um, the name basically of the measure uh, as my thing to color by. And so that's why these show up in the legend. So again, this is a great approach. And if this is the desired outcome, you know, this is a real easy way uh, to do that. Well, it turns out there's a variation on the layer approach that you can use uh, on, on the repeat approach with layer to get the visual shown here where inside the repeat, you know, you can specify that you want to layer these things instead of put them next to each other. And so, you know, after this, it's, it's very similar to what I showed before. Again, we're not showing much code here at all. And in this case, um, we still have the same part here, repeat, but here I'm saying layer, um, instead of the, um, instead of repeat, which we showed in the previous visual. And then down here again, we're doing the datum, so again, we want to get the the value uh, there, uh, not not the sort of the header, not the not the value uh, from those. So we're using this datum syntax here to to get that value. And again, so it shows up here um, in the legend, and it's also used to offset the uh, the bars, right? So again, that's that's a great approach. Um, and if there wasn't yet a better one, I would I would stop the video here, but this uh, transform fold one to me was the the coolest one so far um, let me just quickly mention with this one um, again this approach i just showed you this one it, it scales well you could just keep listing out more measures in the in the initial array there um, and it would just work right and that's that's also true of this last approach but this one um, i thought was really cool so i wanted to cover this one last again we've got the same input products along with three measures um, and basically what this fold transform does, it's basically an unpivot of your data. So instead of um, one column and then three measures, we'd have three columns where we'd have product sort of attribute and value if to use like the power query unpivot syntax. Now in this case, it actually calls them key and value. So you'd have a key column and a value column. And in this visual, I'll show you, you can specify the name so they don't have to be called key and value. Um, but basically it turns your data from this type of a structure back to, you know, this type of a structure uh, where again, we'd have the year, we'd have the, the, the key, which would be, you know, sales 2020, sales 2021, and then the values. Uh, so you're, you're structuring your data like this inside the visual, uh, which can enable a lot. And again, there's a, there's a pivot approach um, that you could uh, pivot your data inside the visual as well. And there's many other transforms that are that are powerful as well. But if we look at the code for this one, again, right away you can see it's not much code, just like the la last one. Um, in this case, um, we don't need to specify. I put the double quote spec there to provide the spec. Um, not that that's a big deal. Um, but this one, you use the transform and fold syntax. And basically, I'm saying um, I want to fold these three fields into two fields 
called key and value. And that's what they would be called if I didn't put this part here at the end. But I decided I wanted to override the terms key and value to get more specific. So it's more understandable later in my um, code here to say I want it to be called year and total sales. So this is the key. This is the value. Um, again, same kind of stuff. I've got the mark. I've got the encoding. Um, and then um, here I'm just specifying these values throughout. So in this case, my Y value is total sales, which is my value from the unpivoted data. Um, and then the color and offset are both using the field year um, to, to do that, right? And so again, I'm able to make the easier version of the visual like I showed you on the first tab um, in a visual that has multiple measures. And again, I could keep adding more here um, if I chose to, okay? So I just wanted to share uh, what I think is, is some really new functionality we get with the Deneb visual, you know, that's based on Vega Lite. Um, and encourage you to explore it. And again, I'm excited to see what, what people uh, do with all these new capabilities. And hopefully we'll get a community going where we're sharing all these specs that we'll um, each create um, so that people can go from you know zero to really useful uh, visual very quickly. Thank you.